you want lots and lots and lots of wood. Well, I already did you one tree farm, but you said, Avo, it uses up too much iron. And you know what? You're probably right. It does use a lot of iron, but this one uses almost none, just a little bit. Why don't you come and have a look? Don't you go anywhere. <laughs> Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, depending on what time you're watching this next episode from me, Avamance, and this is our farm tutorial series. And we, in the background here, you can see we've got the wood farm that we did in like episode six or seven or something like that in this particular series. And I've had a lot of feedback saying it's brilliant, but it uses an awful lot of hoppers, which means it uses an awful lot of iron. And you're not wrong, it does use quite a lot of iron, and people are considering that that to be quite expensive to be able to produce a load of wood because it's very, very effective at bringing out a load of wood. Well, I thought, let's crack on and make one that uses almost no iron whatsoever. In fact, this only uses one hopper, and that hopper's optional, frankly. You don't even have to use that if you don't want to. So it's a lot, lot, lot cheaper. We're going to use the wonder that is the observer block to be able to make a tree farm that makes loads and loads of wood for you and it's so, so easy that you don't need any iron whatsoever. So I think we should have a go, but I do need to just acknowledge here that our mate FedEx Gaming did come up with the original concept of this. What I've done is I've made it more PC friendly because these were done on console, and I've also expanded the way in which you can build wood. He's only allowed you to build a block six wide of wood that you could physically mine through. Mine goes a lot bigger than that, and it also is expandable in that you can keep feeding a lot more of the bone meal into it without having to keep going into the dispenser. And so it's just, I think, a little bit of an improvement on what he did, but his was awesome. And the link to his video is in the description below because he deserves it. And let's crack on with this design. So what you need for this particular build is 42 pistons, three observer blocks, one block of redstone, 21 redstone repeaters, one redstone comparator, one dispenser, has to be a dispenser, not a dropper, one block of dirt if you haven't built on dirt itself, two chests, one hopper, although the two chests and one hopper are completely optional, 36 structural blocks, I've used stone, but I mean you could use wood or something like that if you wanted to, 26 redstone, one lever, three slabs and i've made that it so it's the same block as the 36 stone there so it's stone slabs a load of bone meal i've just got 64 there but you're going to want loads and 64 oak saplings i've got here but again you're probably going to want a load more than that and then a number of structural blocks to build a building up around it that you don't have to do if you don't want to and obviously you want a nice chopping thing so an axe maybe with some nice enchantments to mean it get a lot of more yield from it it's up to you but a nice axe for you to do your bashing with let's get on with the build step one is to build a row of pistons so we're going to come across nine four five six seven eight nine and then we're going to make this four high so we've got just again a row of nine pistons coming along the top of this and then we're going to put another row of pistons along the top of that nine across and then finally another row along the top of that so you've got a wall four high and nine across and then here right in the end this bit here we need to get an observer block we need to do it so when it farts it farts out towards us in its direction you see this little bum there did a little red fart which is great that's what we want it to do and off the back of that we want to get a block and coming out of that block here facing us in this direction we get another piston then leave two gaps and another piston there so you can see we've got two gap there and we want to get a block of redstone just on there like that. Then we want to get a row of blocks right the way along here, two wide. You can see all the way like that. And get a, a redstone repeater into the back of each of these pistons just like that. And we need to get ourselves some redstone, which I ain't got out yet, which is a bit naughty of me. And we're going to put redstone line all the way along the back of these repeaters. So that connects all of them up. And just one dot of redstone right there. Then we need another block just here. Get stone there. You can use any block you want. It doesn't have to be stone. I just happen to be using stone because it was what was in my inventory. We're going to get a repeater there. We're going to get another block of stone there and two blocks of stone up there. Bit of redstone there. Bit of redstone now. And then on this block here, which is kind of the not the top one, but the next one along, we need to come out one and then get a stone slab on the top of it then come out level with that you can see there that's level with that and then get a bit of redstone there and there and there and then we're just going to basically run this all the way along so as it's the entire width of 
that and then come and get another slab that makes that the entire width of that get redstone line all the way down the slabs so you can tell it's different because it's on the slabs and then again a load of repeaters popping in to the back of them so that is the back circuit there then what we need to do that kind of is the pushy outy bit we need to do the pushy back inny bit so we need two repeaters there set that to four set that to two and then one little bit of redstone now what's going to happen here i'm just going to explain it to you when this observer block here sees something land in this square that's going to start out a signal into this block here that is going to be transferred into that piston, which is going to push that redstone. It's a, remember, it's a one tick pulse, so it's going to push that redstone really quick into this line. That line is then going to activate, and it's going to come all the way along. Ignore this bit for a minute. I'll come back to that. All the way along here, through that repeater, and up and all the way along here, so which is going to fire all four of those pistons, the bottom two, and then one tick later, the top two rows. And then, but at the meantime, this signal is going to come back it's going to go into that, which is going to delay it by two ticks. It's going to come into that, delay it by four ticks, which is then going to fire that piston and shoot that block back away from that line, which turns it off, which retracts all of these, and you end up with the system effectively resetting. So let me just show you what I mean. We're going to stick a block here. That's going to push all of that out, and that block is then pushed there. Stick another one, doing that again. Stick another one, and it's doing that again. You can see it sits, sets and resets, sets and resets over and over. So that is the pushy bit of this particular build. The next bit is dead simple too. So we're going to come across one, two, and on the third block, we're going to stick a dispenser facing us this way. Has to be a dispenser, cannot be a dropper. This next bit is optional. You don't have to do this. Go into shift click and stick a hopper, stick into the side of that dispenser, and then on top of the hopper, we're going to put a double chest. The reason I say this is completely optional is you could just fill this hopper up manually if you wanted to, but if you've got all of this space for bone mill rather than just that space for bone mill, it actually means you've got far, far less input time and you can do much more wood in a much short space of time. So I recommend that you have this little system on here. Now in front of this dispenser, you want to make sure, you may already have done it, but you want to make sure that you've got dirt. So if you're building this in a any area like a stony area or a sandy area make sure you've got a block of dirt right there otherwise it ain't gonna work and then pistons one two three and four right like that then get another observer block come around the back because you want its farty bum to be pointing towards you when you're in this direction boom you see that little red fart came out again get a block you want to put a block on the back of that two blocks on top one block out and then if you want to you can get rid of those so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the seventh block in this tower here, above the dirt, is a dirt block. What that's going to do is that is going to limit the height of the trees. We don't want any of these massive trees that get ultra branches slapping all over the place. We want nice, simple trees, so they never get any taller than that, and that is exactly the height they need to be without going mad, and we don't want them to go mad. So we've got this block here. We need to get another observer block, and then so leave a piston, then facing... So as the, the farty red bum faces downwards, we stick that in there. You can see the red bums there. And then we come up, stick a bit of redstone on his face. We get another stone there and a bit of redstone on that. Then what's going to happen there, whenever this observer here gets an update, that's going to fire out into that block there, which is going to give that redstone, because remember that redstone actually occupies the whole of this block, give that redstone a signal and that updates that redstone. So this observer sees it puts that little red fart which activates that redstone which puts signal into that stone so all four of these do fire so I'm just going to show you that I'm just going to put a block of stone on the face there you can see they'll fire. I'll take it out so updates there so when you get a block there it gets pushed along like that just like that so it's very very simple and that is pretty much the makings of the pushy section so you've got that pushy section and this pushy section what we need to do now is we need to create a redstone clock so let me just get the ingredients i need for that there and there so we're going to get a comparator coming out of this dispenser that then sucks the signal put into subtract mode and sticks it into a redstone repeater we need that repeater there because that comparator only gives a very weak signal a signal basically of one block and we want to, to have a far stronger signal uh, in case we are running out of bone milk inside this dispenser 
and then that runs into a block like that. We're going to get redstone dust going one, two, three, just like that. That runs back into there. We're going to get another block there. Then we're going to come out of the way. Whoops, come out of the way. We're going to stick redstone dust there, and you'll see that then connects those two circuits up. We do not want that. We need to separate those circuits. So if I come out to the side so you can see, the way we separate those circuits out is by sticking a block here. Because that's a solid block, that is going to cut that signal off, which means that circuit now is completely separate to this circuit. They might as well be at opposite sides of the map. They are not going to interact with each other. So when this has got anything in it, this dispenser now, it is basically going to go completely mad. So let's just click into that and you can see it's going click, 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 and it will do it forever. It's not dispensing anything and it won't do until there's something in this dirt, but we can get quite annoyed by the fact it's clicking like that. So shift click, stick a lever on top, flick that lever, and that will basically create an on off system for this, um, this particular contraption. You can turn it on, turn it off, turn it on and turn it off so that's the end of the redstone now we've put a load of bone mill into this chest you can see we've got eight lots of 64 bone mill in this chest but even though it's on the hopper it's not going anywhere you can see that it's just sat in this large chest now that is because this hopper has been locked by virtue of this lever being um, turned in this direction so basically the lever turning the system off also makes the lopper the, the hopper lock on so it locks the hopper. If we then turn the system on, when it's theoretically going to be using the bone mill, you'll see, look, that bone mill is now flooding into the system, which is brilliant. That's exactly what it is we want. So if I then escape that, and then I turn that on, and it stops. So it's a really good way of controlling the dispensation into this particular hopper. And if you look at the, the dispenser here, you can see already the bone mill that started to dispense has gone into the dispenser, which is brilliant. What we're going to do now is we're going to give this system a bit of a test. We're going to run it just for a little while and we're going to put some oak saplings in there. And what's going to happen when the system is on, the bone mill is going to fertilize this oak sapling, make it grow into a lovely big tree, which is then going to activate this observer because you get an update in front of it because the tree will grow higher than that. That will then push the four lots of wood along, which allow us to place another sapling, which will cause more bone mill to come out which will grow again, which will push it out, and so on and so forth. So I'll just illustrate it a little bit. So that's obviously then fertilizing that tree, and eventually that tree is going to grow. You see like that? Can you see what happened there is it all got pushed across? So I'll just stick another one in there, and that's going to fertilize that tree, and eventually that tree is going to grow. Like that. Do it again. And there you go. So now we've got four trees in there. So I'm just going to do this on a bit of a speed up and see if we can't get some trees almost to the end. So I'll be back when we've done that. Let's crack on. So you can see here we are just one away from the end. So we've got all of this wood lurking all the way along here. So we're going to do one more, and we're going to watch what happens at that end. So let's turn it back on again. So that keeps going. So we've put that there, and then we'll watch what happens to the wood all the way over this side when that eventually grows out. So you can see there, what happened is the wood went across and then got pushed out by that one. And if we come along, let's just turn this off here. And if we come around the man the back here, you can see what's happened is this wood has all been pushed out one. Then we'll carry on, and this wood along here will grow all the way along, come to the end, and get pushed out. So we'll have a two wide block, and then we'll carry on and carry on and carry on until we've got loads of wood in a big block up there, just like that. Now, what's also cool about this is as this wood is pushed out, that's going to make these leaves rot out, and that's going to replenish your stock of saplings. So you're going to get sapling refunds off the back of these trees growing as well, which is absolutely superb. So I'm going to carry on until we've got a nice old load of block of wood, and I'll be back when I've done that. So we have now completed this cycle, and we've turned off the dispenser. And what we've got is a massive block of wood. 
and you can see we've got here 13 across. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And that's the reason, even though this block here is in front of the observer block, it hasn't pushed it because it is beyond the push limit of a piston. It's 13 blocks long. It's also nine blocks across and four blocks deep, which means you've got 468 blocks of oak in this instance, but you can obviously use other woods as well. But 468 blocks of oak sat in this block, ready for you to ax away and get loads and loads of wood. And you can do, I mean, just crazy amounts of building with that amount of wood. And if that's it not, not enough, you can just crack on and make yourself some more once you've locked off the end. So it's an absolute wood fest, this one. And here we have the final product. I'm never gonna leave anything open, am I? Come on, I wanted to make it look at least half decent. It's a little bit bland around the edges, but it's just made of wood. And you can see here, this is the bit where all the wood grows into. And this bit here is the bit you would go in to go and do the necessaries with all the, the saplings and everything. And so you're coming out here, you just close those two doors. And then you come all the way around the outside here and you've got a big old wooden wall that you can just then set to as much as you want it to and get rid of and make a nice old mining session out of it. It is really that simple. And there you go, one really easy farm to get loads and loads of wood into your survival Minecraft world. You really don't get anything more simple than that. I think it's so very, very simple. It takes a little bit of work just to keep placing your saplings, but that's not really that big a deal, is it, to be honest? So you can get loads of wood. If you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to slap that like button all over the place. Today, we're gonna go for 714 likes, 714 likes. So if you're in that 714, thank you very much. And if you like it after 714, thank you very much as well. That is absolutely awesome. And also, if you haven't done it already, please do remember to hit that subscribe button and join my sub club. I'll look forward to seeing you on that list and I'll see you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.